everyone, this is Doc Lee and for today's episode, I will be discussing about the parts of the monograph. The Senior High School curriculum in Dr. Sisuyu Potong National High School follows the implemented curriculum of the Fed, wherein in the Senior High School, there are at least three subjects for research. One is practical research one, which is all about qualitative research. Two is practical research two, which is all about quantitative research. And the last research subject is the I3, increase investigation and immersion. For today's episode, I will be discussing about the parts of the monograph, which is the final or the terminal requirement of practical research one. So what is a monograph? So from the word in itself, mono means one. So monograph is a study or a research of only one topic. So usually monograph is being required in humanities subject, but in other subjects as well, monograph is also applicable. So I will be discussing the parts of the monograph. So in Dr. Cecilio Potong National High School, we are implementing the five parts monograph. The first part of the monograph is the introduction and the topic background. So what are the content of introduction and the topic background? So definitely, introduction introduces the topic. So this is the format. You have the title, then where it will be submitted. Then the third part here is impartial fulfillment of the requirement practical research one. Then the name of the author and the date it was published or it was uh, submitted to the teacher. Topic background wherein I introduces the topic. So I uh, presented here well, uh, I presented here how Bibinka was developed by the residents of my chosen uh, resource environment or locality. So I introduce here the uh, topographical condition of the people of the area, why um, there is a development of the different varieties of Bibinka. So I mentioned here that the place is located in a valley with a big body of water, a river. So because of the presence of the big body of water, the main livelihood of people is rice farming. Alongside uh, why, uh, rice farming is they also engage themselves into coconut farming. So definitely because of topography, there was this development of uh, rice production and because of the presence of rice, they develop different kinds of delicacies. And with the presence also, the ample supply of coconut wine, so the um, innovated the recipe of Bibinka, giving a twist, adding the um, fresh coconut wine or the tuba as the leavening factor of the, um, of the Bibinka. Okay. So part also of introduction and adapting background is the mention or the uh, inclusion of related literature. So you mentioned at least two sources of information relating to the uh, topic. So here in my example, I um, mentioned a, a blog wherein the blog discuss about the traditional foods and delicacies in the Philippines. But of course, there is a need really to acknowledge the, the source of the information. Okay, so again, part one is introduction and topic background. Simply, it introduces the topic, why there is a need to conduct the research, and what are the per pertinent information that are worthy to be mentioned in your part one. Okay, one, two, I'm done with part one. So I'll go now to part two, which is the, the guide questions. So what is the difference between the ordinary questions 
and the guide questions. So the guide questions is a type of data gathering process wherein you interview your respondents, either key informant interview or you will be conducting focus group discussion. So the key informant interview, you can on at least have one or two focus group discussion. You can have four and more. So uh, we reduces the number of respondents for the interview because of the pandemic. So the guide questions for qualitative research is different from the questions when you are conducting a survey. Because in a survey, you will just simply be asking questions and there are choices. But in the qualitative research, the guide questions, no? the guide questions are simply written to serve as a guide when you're asking questions. So for instance, I have it here. What are the ingredients in cooking the dinka in the traditional way? So uh, for 1B, you, the respondents would just simply answer, but in the quali, you can dig deeper. You can dig deeper to the questions being asked. So you can you can do iterative interview. You can go back and ask more questions, clarifying questions. So another question that I have it here is, what are the risks, the secrets in cooking a delicious bibingka? So definitely you will be asking the how and the why. You go deeper to the issue. So that is the difference between guide questions in the quality versus the questions in the quantity. Because in the quantity, there are choices. It can be answered yes or no. But in the quality, it is an open-ended questions. Okay. So I'm done with chapter 2. So I'll go now to chapter two, uh, to part 3, which is the operational definition of terms. So from the word operational, so words, important words, in research must be defined operationally. So how they are being understood, being used in your research in the specific field of interest. So for instance, because my focus is on cookery, okay, so cultural research, documentation of an existing uh, recipe. So I define terminologies in the context or how they are understood by the people in the community. So, tip or technique when you are defining important terminologies, first, you have to focus on the important words found in your title. So, I have it here, the traditional way of, of baking bibingka with duba. So, uh, I, arrange, no, I arrange the important terminologies. So, I started with bibingka. Okay, so I define bibingka as a local delicacy made from rice flour, cooked in stew fire. Then important terminologies in cooking bibingka or in baking bibingka, I have it lavadura, pugon, okay, or the traditional oven. I define traditional way, what is the meaning of traditional way, tuba, I also define it operationally, and other important terminologies used in your research. So what is the relevance of defining the terms operationally? What do you think? Okay. It is important to define the terminologies locally so that uh, you and your readers would have the same understanding of the words being mentioned in your research. The important words in your research. Okay. So, uh, yes. So let's go now to part four of the monograph, which is the research methodology. So what are found in the research methodology are the research environment, respondent, and data gathering. So here in my research methodology, I mentioned that this qualitative research utilizes a descriptive documentation of an existing cultural practice to gather the needed information. Key informant interview was conducted using guide questions. Photographic documentation was also employed with the permission of the respondent. 
So, I introduces the methodology that I use. I mentioned that I utilize skin format interview and I also use uh, pictures to uh, support the interview or the data that I gathered from the interview. So, next is your environment. Okay, so you have to to present and give a little discussion about your environment because certainly uh, when we're talking about food, so uh, the usual scenario is a particular food is developed or innovated in a particular area because of the presence of certain local sources. Like as what I mentioned, there is a rice, rice field, there is a presence of a big body of water, and also there is a big, say, small scale, not really big, but a small scale um, plantation of coconut. Then the last, the, the last um, paragraph of part four is the presentation of your research uh, respondent. Now, kinasaman ang inyong interview So in this part here, you need to give a solid description of your respondent. Para ba ka nang ma-prove yun or may pakita na this person is, you know, has the experience or had the experience na siya qualification na worthy para himuon mo siyang key informant. So I mentioned here that my uh, respondent or my key informant um, was into cooking bibingka for, say, 40 years, and she's 88 years old, so, so she definitely retired from cooking, but um, in her resume is the solid background about cooking. So, important thing yun, nga tagaan mo, highlight, no? so you would uh, present a picture of your respondent, and try to, you know, present a, a solid background. No, the expertise, the experience of your respondents. So the next part, the chop, the the part five or the chapter five is the presentation of data gathered. So on sa on mo pag arrange ang imong data, okay? So ang imong data i arrange according sa imong guide questions. No? so kung if you started with like in my example, I started with what are the ingredients. So I presented the ingredients, and as much as possible, you would also be showing pictures. So, on sa mga ingredients, unya tagaan mo siya o uh, picture. And then, next is the preparation. So, importante ka ayun nino. So, because my focus is cookery, so I presented the steps in cooking bibingka. In the same time, I presented pictures of the actual cooking. Okay. Huh? Then, Next is the mana mana. <laughs> so, ang sunod na part is the uh, reference or the references. So, in the references, it is very important that you have to acknowledge the sources of your information, be it a person, be it a blog, a, a book, or uh, um, a channel. So, whatever is your sources, you should acknowledge them properly. Because we should get away with plagiarism, we should uh, we should acknowledge the 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 ownership of the articles being mentioned in your research. There's no harm if you mention the authors. So actually, they they give uh, a solid support to your research. So why not acknowledge? Then the last part is the author. So uh, a picture of the author plus a summary of his life or his achievement. And that's it. So that's the monograph, guys. Thank you. So I hope that you are guided now with your monograph and there is no reason not to pass the monograph because monograph is just a documentation of an existing practice in your field of interest, in your track, in your strand. So I hope that you selected your topic already. So why not make it simple? but with impact. Okay, so once again, there's, this is Doc Lee, uh, the Assistant Secondary School Principal 2 of the Senior High School Department. If you have some questions regarding research, make a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the, um, the like button and um, continue, to, you know, continue to love our culture.
Give safe everyone and God bless. Mabuhay. <laughs>